So quilting is an expensive hobby. I think we all realize that, but you can make it a little bit more budget friendly with some tips that I'm going to give you today. Fallon from Sobia Quilts and I partnered again to do another challenge and we're challenging each other to make the same quilt using the same pattern, which is called quadrangle. I hope I'm saying that right. It's so hard to say, quadrangle. It is by Moda, it is a jelly roll pattern, but we decided to make a quilt using Christmas fabrics from our stash and to spend as little as possible using this pattern. So the first budget tip that we have for you is to use a free pattern. This pattern is completely free and there are a ton of patterns out there that are free. So that's always a way to save some money. The next tip is using scraps instead of purchasing fabric. Throughout this video, I'm gonna give you some tips with sewing, but I'm not doing a ton of it because everything is outlined in the free pattern and I'll put a link to it in the description below and in the first comment below too. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by talking about the blocks and the fabric selection. I made a few sample blocks because I really wanted to understand the placement and the types of fabric I was using. So one of the first ones I made was this one and I quickly realized, let me move the other ones out of the way so you can see, I quickly realized that this print was a little too busy and there wasn't enough contrast between these two prints to make the block stand out. It's still a nice block, but I wasn't sure about it. I did like the green center and I definitely like the beige here because it did give some contrast, but it didn't sparkle like I wanted it to. So I decided to change it to different colors and I made this one. I used the same green center and the beige here, but I did red and green and yeah, it's nice. It still didn't do it for me. So I moved on to this one and I loved it. I especially liked this green in contrast. So it's like a medium green with these colors and the dark here and the light here. And I, I just thought it really worked. I tried a red center. I liked it, but I think I liked the green a little bit better. Now the problem I ran into because we're doing this on a budget is I didn't have any more of this green to do all of the sashing strips. So I needed to either buy a lot of fabric because the requirement is two and a half yards for this sashing print. So that's where I spent my money. I bought two and a half yards of this fabric to use for my sashing. And you can see here my sample block using it with the green center and the beige backgrounds is this green fabric. So I did get it on sale. It was originally $11.99 a yard. I ended up getting it at a discount. I bought two and a half yards and I spent $19.48 on this fabric. So this is where I splurged on my money for under 20 bucks. I did get a, a large portion of it and it's something that I would like. Hopefully, you know, Fallon had to do something similar too so we can <laughs> see who wins with this budget challenge. So that's how I came up with this and I highly recommend doing sample blocks. Another thing to consider when making these blocks is to stay away from fabrics like this. So you can see, here's a piece of the fabric I used. It's really cute, but when I made it into the block, you can see you lose a lot of that cuteness of the pattern because it kind of gets lost in this. You could also focus cut, but again, if we're trying to save money, that's gonna waste a little bit more fabric than you may want to. And also with the construction of this block, it doesn't work super well for fussy cutting, but you could do it if you want to. So the construction of the block is very simple. Each overall block is made up of four four patches, and I'll show you them here. So your four four patches with the darks going in. In between each of these are sashing strips. And then you have your center cornerstone, which goes in the middle. Overall, it's a great beginner friendly block and it gives a really cool impact, especially when they're laying together because you get this line or lattice or something that goes through and it's really nice. And we are strip piecing and chain piecing throughout this. It does really work up quickly. So, Although I'm not showing you how to cut everything, I do wanna to talk to you a little bit about cutting those sashing strips and cornerstones because they're tiny. They're one and a half inches wide. So I decided to show you with the sashing strips that goes between the blocks. This is cut to nine and a half inches, which is what the instructions say to do. You cut three of these at that. So I turn the mat over. For me, the lines will distract me and I want all my measurements to come from my ruler. I know this is cut straight, so I'm just gonna line up a line on the bottom of my ruler and make sure it's straight. And I'm gonna line up here and make sure that's straight. I'm gonna cut off my salvage 
And this is folded in half, by the way. Next, I'm going to line up my ruler on one and a half inches. And I know this is a straight line, this is a straight line, and this is a straight line. So if I line it all up, I will be in good shape. And I'm going to cut my one and a half inches. Next, I'm gonna move my ruler over without moving that piece of fabric because that's gonna help stabilize the ruler and I think it gives me a better cut. So I'm moving it over to three, cutting, four and a half, and I'm just gonna keep going in increments of one and a half inches. Okay, so I have all of my sashing strips cut, and I like to use these trays. I get these at yard sales usually. And then I can use a wet erase marker and write right on them. Now you have to be careful, make sure this is dry so you don't get it on your fabric, but it works really well for me. So I know I have 144 one and a half by four and a half inch pieces for my sashing between my four patches. I have 61 of the one and a half square cornerstones and I have 60 of the one and a half by nine and a half sashing strips. And I wrote that all on here. It's nice, it's easy, I can take it right to the machine. So these are my background fabrics or my, I guess, sashing strips and cornerstones like I just said. So next what we're going to do is get our strips ready. I have a video out on how to make your own jelly rolls so I'm gonna use the jelly roll strips I made specifically for this. I'll bring this over, you can see. And then another thing I like to do with scrap quilts is have a rule. My rule is going to be a beige background on my four patches and a dark green center for the middle. So I already have these cut, my sashing strips cut that are gonna be consistent. So now I just need beiges and my Christmas print that's going to be my focus fabric. So the pattern calls for 36 strips of fabric. Out of that 36, you're gonna have 18 light and 18 dark. So for me, I'm using 18 dark Christmas fabric strips and 18 light beige strips because those are my rules and my parameters of the block that I'm making. From those strips, from each one, you're going to cut it in half so you get a strip that is around 21 inches by two and a half inches. Each of these little squares take five inches of fabric to make. So if you do the math, there's four of these four patches in your block, four times five is 20 inches, and then they give you a inch or so to play with for salvages and stuff like that. But not all of us have strips that we can use. Sometimes we just wanna use up some of the scraps that aren't strips. So I'm gonna show you how to utilize those pieces next. Okay, so for example, I have this piece of fabric that is not the width of fabric. I can still cut two and a half inch strips from this. I'll just need a lot more to make the blocks. So I'll just go in with this scrap, because I have plenty. I'm gonna line it up, neaten it up, and cut my two and a half inch strips. Instead of having two 21 by two and a half inch strips, you might have four, whatever this is. This is 13 inch. So you might have four of these that you'll put together to make your blocks. So you can be very creative with this, especially when using scraps, because not all of us have the full width of fabric in our scraps to use. Okay, so I have 36 pieces that measure two and a half by 21 or thereabout. So I would try to make sure I had some reds, some greens, some darkers, some lighters, you know, just so it gives it a variety because it is a scrap quilt. Now, there are a few pieces that I'm using that I'm not quite sure about. This Santa print, which is so, so cute, is a little busy, but I think because it has the red background, it's going to work. I also have another one here that has some little characters on it. So we'll see. I also have some partial strips here that I'm going to use too. And I'm going to make a few extra blocks because there might be some that I don't want to use once I get them into their block form and set them up on the design wall. Extra is always good. I know it's a budget quilt, but sometimes those extras just will save you in the end. Our next step is to take one of the beiges, and again, I have 36, two and a half by 21 about inch strips. So I'm gonna take the beiges, match them with the strips, and we're gonna to go to the sewing machine. I'll show you what to do next. So I have my two piles. I have my Christmas strips here, 
and my beige or background prints here. And I'm going to be making strip sets. So I'm going to take one holiday print and one beige, put it right sides together, line it up on that edge. And so a quarter inch all the way down and just keep doing that till I have all my strips sewn. And I'm going to chain piece them. So I'll show you the first one and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I just finished sewing all of my strips together. And while I'm here at the machine, I'm going to go ahead and make this unit here. Just because I'm sitting here right now and I'm going to be pressing, so I might as well. So I'm going to attach one of these guys to this little green piece. I'm going to use my board to do so. Okay, everything is sewn that I can sew at this step. I am going to take everything over to the ironing board, clip it apart, and then press it. And I'll meet you over at the cutting table to show you how to cut these into units. All of the strip sets are sewn together and they are all pressed and I press to the dark side per the pattern's instructions. So they are all ready to go and we're gonna cut them down into two patches. So I'm gonna take one of these, I'll set these aside. I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do that. I'm gonna lay it on my mat. Again, my mat is turned over. And the first thing I'm gonna do is line up the align on my ruler with that center piece. Now I really like using a small ruler when I'm cutting small units, but you do not have to. You can use a bigger ruler, that's fine. So I'm going to clean up this edge, make sure it is even, and then I'm going to move this to the two and a half inch mark and cut my units. Now each one of these units should make four four patches. So you should get eight two patches to make your four four patches out of it. So I'm just going to line that up and cut. Then I'm going to go over and line it up again and cut. So there's two. And I'm going to do that all the way across the strip. And you have a little bit extra. You can use that for crumbs or just discard it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, two patches. Now you can see if you use uh, smaller pieces, like I showed before, you just have to have more of them and you can still get your eight, two patches from them. So now what you're going to do is take these and flip them over, one over. So you get something that looks like this. When you place it together, those seams will nest. I'll show you, you can see right here how they're nesting together. And you're going to stitch down one side using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I have some blocks made. You're gonna do that with all four. So here I have four made. And it doesn't matter which way you press that center seam because it doesn't intersect with any other seams, so don't worry about that. But we are gonna lay this out like this and you're going to make sure that the squares are pointed in this way and now we can start assembling this block so these go between like this we already sewed this unit so all we have to do is sew one of these guys on it and you're going to have your block done that's it so i didn't quite get the entire quilt finished but that doesn't mean I can't give you some more tips. I do have all the blocks done and I'm working on it. I'm going to get it done though, I will. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram. I will post a picture when it is complete on there so you can see exactly what it looks like all done, all quilted and everything. But I do wanna to talk to you about my plan for finishing. I purchased a king size flannel sheet at a thrift store for $4.99. $4.99, that's what I paid for it. This is what I'm going to be using for my batting. I've learned through my lessons from an old quilt, so many people in the past have used flannel sheets as batting, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give it a shot, and I will let you know how that turns out. I love that it's king size. It gives me a ton of fabric to work with. In fact, I intend to double that flannel sheet for the batting on this. Another great tip, for batting, if you don't want to use a sheet like I'm doing, is to shop the sales for batting or even talk to your local long armor. A lot of times they buy their batting in bulk so they get a really good price on it. And sometimes they'll sell it to you at cost. 
As for the backing, you can do a lot of different things. One of the best tips is piecing some of the scraps you have. Now this could be a really great way to use up some of those scraps that you have and also pull some of those fabrics that you used on the front of the quilt to the back, tying it all together. Now this pattern does call for four and a half yards of fabric. That's a lot of fabric and that can be very expensive. Another great tip is to use extra wide back fabric. So usually you can get it, especially online, for a lot less money than it is maybe for the yardage and piecing it all together. And of course you don't have to piece it all together too. Now when it comes to quilting, there's a few things again you can do. Quilting it yourself is always a great option. And even if you do straight line quilting, it still turns out beautiful if you're not real comfortable doing free motion. You could also tie it, which is really economical, or you can barter with your long armor. Sometimes if they're in a shop like mine is, I will make shop samples for them and she will give me free quilting. So that's always a great way to get things quilted too. You could even barter maybe doing a binding for your long armor, but there's a lot of different options out there to save you some money when it comes to this wonderful hobby that we all love. So all in, I spent a total of $24.47 on the stuff I needed for this quilt. And that included the sashing fabric that I purchased, my big splurge, and the sheet that I'm using. So I think I did pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this challenge. Let us know if there's something you'd like us to do, some other challenge, or have some ideas. We love doing collaboratives. They're a lot of fun for us. And we especially like this one, or at least I did, because I got to challenge myself. I hope you have a great day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you soon. Bye.